Okay, so we're back. Uh, welcome everybody to this uh, final panel of the event, and the last but not the least, obviously. Um, well, personally, I'm really excited to to, to have this um, um, this panel today, and also to be um, here with um, my colleagues Pierre and, and Andreas from the Gaia X um, um, Association. And, um, and the Gaia X uh, Federation Services project. I think uh, it's going to be a really, really interesting um, panel, both um, their presentations and the, the uh, updates on, on their respective um, uh, work, the work they've been doing for now for, for a while, for several, several months or more, more than a year. And um, also the, the final discussion we'll have, we have at the end about the, the, how we see research and innovation um, in, in Europe around edge computing and other related technologies and data infrastructure as well. So very quickly, I'm just going to um, introduce you to, the, uh, to our speakers today. So thank you, Pierre, and thank you, Andreas, for, for joining us. I know you, your schedule is quite tight. And uh, you're pretty busy, um, so thanks a lot for, for joining us. I'm sure the, uh, the, uh, the attendees and, and members of the Open Nebula community and, and the, the one at Spray will be really happy to, to have your insight here. So, um, Pierre, the floor is yours. Welcome again to the, to the event. Well, thank you very much for having us, Alberto. Um, going to share my screen. And here we go. So today I will uh, present um, the trust framework, um, but with an emphasis on the relation to the to the edge case. Um, so the trust framework, um, and, and going back about to a bit on the origin of GAX, to so to accelerate digital transformation. Um, also important part I think he believes to build trust to enable user to believe, to, to trust cloud services and on-prem services, digital services to, that are that can be used and without liking, without leaking their data um, or knowing exactly where it's uh, being processed, run, stored, and so on. So part of this big statements that we have accelerating European digital transformation, we have two um, sub-tracks, sub-part, um, the legal autonomy and the technical autonomy. The legal autonomy that everything that relates to to make it easier, uh, PDFs and text. So extraterritorial law, the contract, the KYC, the consent acquisition for personal data, any regulation that a specific market might have where you need to sign or to agree on a set of rules. And that will be uh, set and said, um, and uh, we will put that under the box of usage policy. The one here. Um, on the technical autonomy, we have two aspects, the data and the hardware. Hardware is out of scope for GAX, and there are other initiatives in Europe that um, tackle data, tackle that, uh, cover that. On the data part, we have a definition of data within GAX, which is different from um, some other definition. It's really a set of bytes stored on a device. So it includes also the software. And I believe this is very important in the age case to know exactly what type of runtime, fireware, uh, microcode is being used, uh, who owns what um, on those, on those um, devices. And um, since we're talking about edge, also the um, edge continuum sometimes, um, you have a lot of use cases with 5G application where you can deploy application next to the antenna. You need to know what type of software is being used also. So you know what, have the, what type of dependency you have on the one providing you the stack. So the technical autonomy and the data include software and data. And for that, we have two categories, the access right. So access-based control um, can be attribute-based access um, control, uh, based on attributes can be, and the usage policy. The usage policy here is, uh, refer to the use policy of the legal autonomy because most of the time, technically speaking, we don't know how to enforce usage policy. We know that we have some technology, for example, uh, trusted execution enclave, SGX or SVE and IMD, uh, fully homomorphic encryption and multi-party computation for the building and so on. But those covers only one very specific part of, of um, an usage enforcement and are not yet generic. And most of the time, when you want to enforce usage policies, you refer back to a contractual document that you've signed, so back to the legal autonomy. Um, and that together, 
those all those blue boxes are what we call the ga uh, this this forms a common digital governance and we do believe that if we really want to enable scenarios from the edge devices to the cloud to on-prem to any or to another edge devices you need to have this common digital governance across organization across provider otherwise that would not work so the next slide is um a description of how those ecosystems will work so for in this picture, we have four ecosystems, you might have a lot of them. Um, the pictogram here refers to service data infrastructure. There is no devices here. There is no pictogram for devices, but let me put a mobile phone, for example, or a, a kind of sensor. So I don't know how to draw a temperature or water level sensor, but you can also have sensors um, that are um, you, you can collect the data of those sensors in one ecosystem and the goal is to make them then how to make them interoperable accessible by all the ecosystem and for that you really need to have this common what we call the common trust framework in GAX that enables to build this um, common governance um, this picture can be um, split in three planes and those planes are um, the same one that are being described in the chapter two section, chapter two of the uh, cloud federation reference architecture from the NIST, where you have the trust plane, which is really shared across ecosystems, the management plane and the usage plane. And in terms of end-to-end um, -end scenario, it's very important that a device here that can belong to a participant can uh, put data in independently of the software stack is access or is can be made interoperable that's not necessarily must be interoperable but it can be made interoperable if they wish with another user living in another uh, ecosystem um, so why this is important it's because when you are specifically on the um, uh, edge side you are composing you are assembling a lot of services together and we, we need to be able to compose, to assemble those atomic elements, um, sorry, those atomic elements um, to build better or higher, um, yeah, longer chain of services that will bring more value. This, for example, pipeline or this data pipeline that I have here from the edge with the mobile phone to the cloud with the database, we know how to run that on one organization. But now let's figure out that, let's imagine that we have not like one organization, but 12 different organizations, each of them owning a piece of the jigsaw. You need to have interoperability of the data itself. So make sure that makes sense to share the data there. The portability, so you can have, you can execute your workload or your um, algorithm on a specific um, infrastructure and the uh, a common governance so that you have really also this interconnection those uh, this capacity to well technically speaking talk having the same language so that's more related to the infrastructure part uh, interoperability at the bottom part of it and this is important because this simple pipeline data pipeline that you have from edge to cloud or edge to edge that's something that you will find everywhere every time you want to extract value to create new added value for added services. Um, the common schema is that you have data, uh, a magic box that we call artificial intelligence, and it, it extracts some value. The, under those boxes, what you have is a much more complex set of atomic steps uh, from the ingestion of your data to the cleaning of the data, augmentation, normalizing, so you know how to compare them and uh, well then the, the training and the tuning of the, your model and so on and the deployment. And as I said before, if we have one step of those one, one vertical element in one organization, how do we enable the data to be transferred, the services to be transferred from one organization to another? That's what we will focus on with the data exchange. So that's now part of it, the, um, what are the work that we are working on in GAIAX. So that's really, working on how to enable that. Um, there is five main feature um, to address. The identity, so that you, you have a common identity schema, a common set of attributes 
So for example, CRUD, uh, CRUD, read, update, ex, uh, delete, and execute. But we need to, to make sure that uh, in the case, for example, of OpenID Connect for SSI, is that an OpenID Connect Federation understand what the other OpenID Connect Federation uh, said. On the data protocol, or uh, that also include the infrastructure. Um, well, you need to have interoperability. Um, um, which type of con container runtime do you use? Uh, Docker, Rocket, Singularity, and so on. Very important uh, policy negotiation that includes access right in that case. If you are negotiating an access between organizations, you need to be able to speak to automate as much as possible that access. For example, we have technology, we have domain specific language that enable us to do that. Rego, which is an extension of Datalog with uh, JSON capabilities. We have ODRL. Uh, there are uh, other domain specific language that enables to have uh, policy negotiation for specific ecosystems. Once you have negotiated your policies and you agree on that, you need to have traceability. You need to be able to refer back to a prior agreement that is stored in an immutable way. So it can be a very big central database where you store everything, or it can be just the hash of the contract that you store in a distributed ledger. The implementation is really specific to the ecosystem, but the feature and the functionality are the same. And then obviously, well, um, if you want to be able to do to exchange services, you need to be able to discover them. That will be all for a quick overview of uh, what we are working on in GaiaX and, the, um, and how it's uh, very important to include all the aspects of the, the stacks from devices, sensor, up to um, um, collecting the data, ingesting the data in a data pipeline to, uh, to create more advanced services. Just one additional note, uh, which I wasn't planning, but that might be interesting also. We are working with the other initiative outside of GAIS, such as the asset administration platform um, that have already a lot of expertise in the industry, industry 4.0, and on how to build those um, from the sensor in the in the manufacturing um, line up to uh, training models. Thank you.